A Fox News alert. The long-awaited border security bill is done. Already facing backlash in some sectors as the text claims there is no amnesty for anyone already here. These are just some of the highlights. 50,000 new visas per year for five years. $650 million let over from the Trump years to build the wall. They'll start finishing, get about 50 miles. Increase ICE funds and detention capacity to 50,000. Shut down authority after an average of 5,000 encounters a day. But the lead negotiator and our next guest insists it's the most misunderstood part of the bill, the one I just read. So joining us now for his first interview since the text was released last night, GOP Senator James Langford. Senator, uh, thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to go to the part that you wanted to find the most, most mis misunderstood, the 5,000. What is it exactly? Yeah, it, it, it's really ridiculous when we go on the backside of December. What just happened when we had 10 and 12,000 people a day coming across? And this authority is a 5,000 authority to say if you get to 5,000, which we've been there every single day except for seven in the last four months, that it completely closes the border down. It deports everyone. It changes the paradigm from right now what the Biden administration is doing is catching and releasing everyone to actually catching and deporting everyone. It literally flips the script on it. I have people saying, well, I don't want to do that at 5,000. I want to do that at 3,000. Say, well, fine, we can do 3,000. But right now, every day we're at 5,000. It doesn't matter between the two. We've got to be able to have something that mandatorily deports everyone rather than actually releases everyone. That's what this does. Some people are thinking that this is somehow like counting 5,000 people in every day and releasing them. That, that's absurd. We change the asylum laws. We increase detention beds. We double the deportation flights. Uh, we uh, add ankle monitors for people that are actually coming through that do these family groups that come through so we can track any individual that when we don't have capacity right. there's all the things that we build into this to make this a much stronger system gaps that are in the law get closed in this structure so you're saying even people who have come through and they actually fit the demand and can get in that counts including people right. that are get rejected that counts so when you hit That's that right. 5,000 number everything shuts down almost like the stock that market when there's too much trading they'll shut it down to the next day and you're saying if this was in place now the border would be shut down that's correct. The border would be shut down. Not only did the border be shut down today, it had been shut down every single day the last four months, and we'd have been turning people around. Instead, actually, people have been released into the country. If this would have been in place four months ago, we'd have had a million fewer illegal immigrants into our country right now. Also, uh, there's some text in there that says the president does have some discretion to open up the border after it's shut down uh, and, and not go by these rules. Is that true? So, it, again, we're back to the crazy details of this of people that are throwing stuff in there just trying to be able to attack a proposal that actually closes the border down. Yes, there's a discretionary piece on this, but it's a mandatory close down. They've got 275 days in the next year that has to be closed down. There is some discretion for the president to be able to reopen it, 45 of those. If we have something like a hurricane come through Central America, something like that, we're trying to be able to manage a natural disaster. But it's not like just a random turnaround on this. And I've had folks that have said, hey, the the Secretary of Homeland Security would have those authorities. So would every president. So would, you know, a, a Chad Wolf in a future Trump administration would have authority. So the, the key thing here is changes the asylum laws, builds more wall, adds more detention beds, adds more deportation flights, uh, changes this 10 year backlog that we're currently in now to weeks before people are actually deported. That's what the bill really does. All right. So the main thing that you got, you believe one of the main things is asylum changes. Now, the criteria to get into our country, you need to do what? So right now, if you walk across the border today, you can say, I have fear in my country, and you'll be released into the country for 10 years. Under this bill, you walk across the border and say, I have fear in my country. They say, prove it. You've got to have a higher standard of evidence. And then they say, they're going to check your criminal record. They're going to say, could you have internally relocated into another place in your own country, which by far most people could? Did you, could you have stopped somewhere along the way right. and actually remained there? If any of those are true, then you're deported immediately. Instead, today, they're going to be released for 10 years under this bill they would be deported quickly on it but not unaccompanied minors and not families they get ankle monitors and get to stay right well they get ankle monitors but they actually go through this higher standard they don't get to stay they go through this higher standard they immediately have their processing within weeks and then they are deported as well uh, the difference is it's very difficult to be able to actually um, uh, hold all of these families in that position so you got to find another way to right. be able to do it so this bill addresses that right now again those families are released for 10 years in this structure it would be weeks and then they would be deported so people have got to decide on this do i want everyone in the 
the country, unlimited numbers, what we have now, or do we want to have a faster, stronger system that we're actually deporting people? All right, so let's talk about the NGOs, uh, the Catholic Charities. They get huge money to house and provide uh, and provide accommodations to illegal aliens who are trying to get into this country. You put $1.4 billion into this. Uh, that is an area in which I know Republicans are upset about. Can you want to expand on that? Yeah, it is interesting. I have some folks that are upset about trying to get humanitarian aid to people that are struggling on it. I, I get that. We want to be able to, we're Americans, we provide food and water to people and don't just leave them in the desert to be able to die. But I would also say that aid is also attached to our beds. So here's how we attach these two things together. So to be able to get that economic assistance actually got out, that means the Biden administration, before that assistance goes out at the end of it, that means they've got to add more deportation flights, they've got to add more uh, detention beds, they've got to add more ICE officers, they have to add more Border Patrol officers, right. they have to actually implement these things before those final dollars go out. So those things are attached. That's actually a forcing mechanism to say right. you want those dollars to go out, you got to actually start deporting people. So here's what Senator Mike Lee said. Not only does he say you need three weeks to read through it, he said no self-respecting senator should agree to vote on a 370-page bill this week. Any 41 senators can prevent the bill from proceeding. If you agree that senators should have this bill for at least a few weeks and certainly more than a few days before voting on it, say so. Uh, you understand where he's coming from, right? Don't you guys have a procedural vote this week? Are you going to vote on the bill by the end of the week? So we actually have this bill came out uh, yesterday, Sunday. Uh, it, the first procedural vote is Wednesday, and that procedural vote is literally just open it up to be able to go through it and to be able to say, are we going to debate it this week? That's what Senator okay. Lee is actually talking about. It's interesting that he said he's already opposed to it. He needs three weeks to be able to read it, but he's already opposed to it. Uh, so uh, again, people have got to be able to read it, go through it themselves. Don't just go off a Facebook post somewhere what the bill says. This dramatically changes asylum. It dramatically changes deportations. We no longer have a 10-year backlog. It builds right. more wall. Those are the key things that it actually does. But read it for yourselves. Don't just believe what's online. Just, here's what uh, Speaker Johnson said, I have seen enough. This bill is even worse than we expected. It won't come close to any of the border catastrophe the president has created. As the lead Democrat negotiator proclaimed, under this legislation, the border never closes. If this bill reaches the House, it will be dead on arrival. Your thoughts? Yeah, un unfortunately, he would step out and be able to see that right away before, obviously, he had had a chance to be able to read it as well and to be able to go through it. The key aspect of this, again, is are we as Republicans going to have press conferences and complain the border's bad and then intentionally leave it open? After the worst month in American history in December, now we've got to actually determine, are we going to just complain about things or are we going to actually address and change as many things as we can? If we have the shot, and it's amazing to me, if, if I go back two months ago and say we had the shot under a Democrat president to dramatically increase detention beds, deportation flights, lock down the border, to be able to change the asylum laws, right. to be able to accelerate the process, no one would have believed it. And now no one actually wants to be able to fix it and says, I don't want to even debate it. I don't want to discuss it. We have to decide right. as Republicans, what are we going to actually do about the border? Leave it open or actually leave it closed? Here is what uh, Senator Speaker, excuse me, Speaker Johnson said yesterday on Meet the Press. We are willing to work with the Senate. I am not disclosing that. And I've been very consistent for the 100 days that I've had the gavel. We're willing to work, but they have to be serious about it. If you only do a few of those components, you are not going to solve the problem. And Kristen, that's not a Republican talking yeah. point. That's what the sheriffs at the border, the, the Border Patrol agents, the deputy chief of, of U.S. Border Patrol, a 33-year veteran of the agency, told us. He said it's as though we're administering an open fire hydrant. He said, I don't need more buckets Let like the president's proposed. I need to stop the flow. And we know how to do that, but Joe Biden is unwilling to do it. So if you could answer him, what would you say? Yeah, I would say we do have to be able to decide here because at one point I'll hear people say we don't need more laws. The president has all the authorities they need. And then the other side say we need more than the laws that this is actually giving. So, again, we have to decide, is this a matter of we have all the authorities that are right. needed, we need to do nothing, or we need to do everything because he doesn't have, the president doesn't have enough authority. At the end of the day, right. let's do everything we can. We do have a Democrat president. We have a Democrat Senate. We have a right. Republican House. This is a moment to solve as many things as we can and then keep working on the next Thing. Senator Langford, what gets people nervous is that we watch this president, I think you agree with me, do more damage to the border than any president in history. He won't even go see it during a time in which it's uh, broken. He doesn't want to hear about it. The vice president ignores it. And they're all in support of this bill. Chuck Schumer's in support of this bill. Only Senator Padilla out in California has been skeptical. 
And a lot of Republicans instinctively said, what am I missing? Why are they in support of this bill? Yeah. Well, I would also tell you that there are liberal protesters in D.C., and if you come around the Capitol, there's posters put up all over the place from liberal activists saying, stop this Republican immigration bill as well. There are plenty of liberal activists that are actually furious about this because it's locking down asylum. It's changing the, the uh, parole authority. Right now, today, Biden's going to give out 1,500 work permits to just random people as they cross the border. This bill ends that. That's what the liberal activists are actually fighting against as well. So there are a lot of things in this that we that people should look at and go can we put a stop to this chaos senator uh lindsey graham is in any other republican senators are in to join you in support if this comes to a vote yeah, there are quite a few that are out there. Everybody's going through it, obviously, and people want to be able to read it and actually review it. Some people are taking it seriously and actually going through and saying, does this have a significant change in policy? Can we actually, under a Democrat president, compel them to be able to do things that they do not want to do and for this White House to be able to step out and say they're in support of it? I would tell you, I've been in the negotiations. They fought this all the way through, and then at the very end of it are saying, okay, well, we're going to do it. But there's a big difference here of what will actually occur if we actually implement these things in this bill. Senator Langford, thanks so much. We're just scratching the surface on, oh, what is it, 280 pages on pure border security. But I think you outlined it, and uh, best of luck. Uh, I just know one thing. Uh, you, you worked extremely hard on this for the last four months, and anyone who goes after the personal attacks is just way out of bounds. Senator, thank you so much. Thanks, Brian.